What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dabrunski here. In today's video, I'm going to be covering the highlights from patch 2.3, which is officially now launched to Diablo 2 Resurrected. So this is by far the biggest patch update that the game has received in over 10 years. So it's some pretty exciting stuff. More than, I think, 117 bug fixes and then new gameplay mechanics have been introduced. So very exciting stuff. Again, I'm going to highlight the key components. I got the link for the full blog post in the description below. But again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys think I missed anything major because hopefully these patch notes can stimulate a pretty good discussion below for even potentially more updates. So again, hope you guys enjoy this video. A quick reminder before we jump in, I just want to let you guys know that I do stream twice a week on Twitch. So if you do enjoy this YouTube content, any follows on that platform would be very much appreciated. Got the link for my channel in the description below. That being said, let's jump in. So the first key gameplay mechanic that they introduced is a game scale difficulty bar. So this is similar to the slash players X command. I've covered this in previous videos, but you can now manually change the difficulty setting whenever you want to with the slider bar. This has also actually been introduced in a console. Now I'll admit I haven't covered anything for D2R in regards to PlayStation 5 or Xbox just because I haven't purchased the game for those platforms. I prefer to play on PC, but this is a really cool feature that console players can now finally take advantage of in single player. The one thing that I don't like though is that when you set the difficulty, so say you pick it to players eight, when you save and exit, it will automatically default down to players one again. I really wish for repetitive cycling of runs in single player that it would just stay on the player's difficulty setting that you last left it on. Because for example, in comparison, if you turn on auto gold pickup, it will stay on until you manually turn it off again. It doesn't like automatically default to being off again. So I would really like to see the player's slide bar remain on the same difficulty when you reset a new game. The second key gameplay mechanic is the introduction of a hotkey for force moves. So for those that don't know, it's basically assigning a key other than a left or right mouse button click to move your character. So really kind of cool, small, highly requested feature, very small feature, but it's definitely been a highly requested one. By far the biggest quality of life update in this blog post is the introduction of the quick cast system. So for those that don't know what that means, it's essentially the ability to cast a spell by hitting a hotkey instead of using a hotkey to select a skill and then using your left or right mouse button click. So this is huge. A really kind of common example to compare this to that I think a lot of people can relate to. How many times have you meant to cast Blizzard, but instead you teleport because you maybe didn't hit the hotkey hard enough or you clicked your mouse button too soon? That won't happen anymore because you can just hit your Q and your W or your 1 and your 2 or your F1 and your F2 and you'll actually teleport or cast Blizzard. So that should be a huge quality of life update that you guys can kind of relate to. So the fourth and final gameplay mechanic introduction is the active skill bind bar. This is an option you can toggle in the control setting, I believe, and it just enables you to see what skills you have actively assigned to a hockey. So very minor thing it's not really anything huge but a nice feature that you can toggle on or off so as far as the bug fixes go and miscellaneous updates there's a lot to cover i'm only going to highlight what i think are some of the key ones the first being pathing has been improved for player summon so i'm going to test this later on in the gameplay portion of this video with a summon necro it did feel a little bit better to me not tons better but it still feels like diablo 2 so again let me know in the comments below if you guys have been messing around a lot with the summon necro it does feel a little bit better and I do think that is a nice quality of life update. The first major game crash bug that has been addressed is the Delirium Runeward Mercenary crash. So basically my understanding of it is that if the mercenary using Delirium would do a jab animation at the same time as transforming into a little bone fetish, it would crash your game. So this kind of sucked because the Delirium Mercenary is great for crowd control. I always liked using it, but every time that I did try to mess around with it on stream, it would constantly crash my game. So the fact that this has been addressed, it's huge. And I do think it opens up the possibility of using the room word more because it is very effective if you want to have great crowd control. So it's great for hardcore players, but the game crashing bug has not been addressed. So that's huge. It also looks like they addressed an issue where new players joining your game would cause an open trade window to close. This I found to be relatively frustrating when I was streaming because I would be trying to make a trade. I make a public game. Those that are watching me would all kind of like pile into the game to show me their gear or their characters. And every time I tried to open that trade window, it would constantly crash. So 
This is a huge fix and I am really happy that they introduced it. So like I mentioned, there is so many bugs to cover in this video, but one that definitely stands out to me is they removed the need to have line of sight for telekinesis to work. So an example of this was prior to this patch update, you couldn't activate your stash in the rogue encampment if you were on the other side of the wall because you wouldn't have a direct line of sight. That has now been improved and isn't an issue. So this is small minor thing, but a nice change. I do have to admit out of all of the bug fixes, this one is a stand out to me and is a little bit of a disappointment. Again, please let me know in the comments below if you guys agree or disagree, but they fixed the overlapping bug issue with firewall or blaze. So it no longer does the crazy damage that it did before. The reason why I'm a little bit upset is because one, it opened up a new opportunity for a really powerful end game fire build because I could do Ubers with a solo sorceress using Firewall. I did it on Twitch live. It was a ton of fun, kind of a little bit of a bummer to see that disappear, but also it was a great, or I shouldn't say great, a fantastic and was like the new meta for dual element spec going Frozen Orb and Firewall just because of how much damage it did. So it's a little bit frustrating to kind of see the dual element sorceress take a little bit of a nerf. The final game bug that they addressed is something that's huge and has probably caused a lot of grief to players over the years. And that is the bugged Tomb Viper poison damage, the Tomb Viper snakes that are surrounding Neolithak. That is now fixed. It used to do an insane, crazy damage per second frame window or whatever. It would melt characters and you had to use really optimized, very weird setups that had like soul runes that would reduce damage per frame to kind of remotely sustain that damage or just avoid the area in general if there's a lot of snakes. That has now been addressed. The improper physical damage is now just dealing proper poison damage. So that's huge and Neolithak farming characters can finally rejoice. And then finally wrapping everything up with two small miscellaneous fixes. The first is Act 2 Mercenaries now display the correct ore on the tooltip. I've had a lot of people have asked me on Twitch or in my comment section of my YouTube videos, why are you using a prayer mercenary instead of a might or a holy freeze? And it's like, no, I was using the right one. Just the tooltip would not correctly display the act to nightmare mercenary setup. So that has been changed and kind of a very small minor thing, but something that I want to at least point out. The final miscellaneous bug that I want to mention is the gold deposit issue. So for those that weren't aware in original LED, if you had say 2 million in your stash and you could deposit two and a half million and you had 600,000, you went to deposit that 600 K, it would automatically subtract the value of what could fit into your stash. And then you'd have the remainder in your inventory. Prior to this patch, it wouldn't actually allow you to deposit that gold. You had to manually like type in the maximum that you could fit. So it was kind of like a very annoying feature, very small and minor kind of gripe that I had. But the fact that it's introduced now will make mass gambling and stuff a lot easier. So finally, guys, moving on to the gameplay segment, we're going to demonstrate some of the quick cast system. First thing I want to do is show off the improved player summon AI. So I have a summon necro here with 18 skeletons going to just run around a little bit. Tell me if you guys think it's actually is improved. I mean, it does seem like they stay pretty tight. Looks like they actively teleport a little bit quicker too. Again, I'm not teleporting. I'm just running around, but I mean, everything looks okay to me. It looks like it's been improved. It'd be interesting to see. We can check out revives. Revives have really funny AI, so I'm assuming that they don't kind of follow you as round as much. Maybe they'll stick with us. Yeah, I didn't think so. I didn't think AI, I didn't think the revives were going to actively follow us around too well, but it does look like the player summons. Again, I believe that revives follow the AI of the actual monster, so that's why they don't hover, but everything looks okay to me. Not a massive improvement, but like moderately improved uh, player summon AI. Lastly, I just want to do a quick pit run with my lightning sorceress and demonstrate the quick cast system. Again, you're really not going to see anything different, but I'm just going to talk about it because it does feel really smooth to me. Like I do, I do really like it. I don't think in any way, shape or form, is it a negative imp uh, like change to the game. And then again, you can of course toggle it off if you don't like it. But the big thing is casting your battle orders. You don't have to like activate battle command and right click activate battle orders and right click. You just actually have to hit the hotkey twice. So just like that. It's huge in my opinion. Really like that. Um, but yeah, this is the mini active 
hotkey bar that we were talking about so it displays all of my active side hotkeys. With the new quick cast system I might rebind, I don't know, I've just, I've always used F keys like since forever so I've never really felt the need to change. But I'm not actually like mouse clicking, I'm just holding the hotkey to teleport. Really cool. And then again, I can like toggle back and forth. I can shoot lightning. This is my mouse hand button. Just using the quick cast system. So huge, huge improvement. And then again, I do have like force move set, but I don't know how much I'm going to use force move. I use it a little bit. So I even got my delirium mercenary to show you guys. Let's see if he procs. Another cool thing too is I feel like our hands the fact that you can just hold the hotkey down now? I don't know. I think our hands are really gonna like the fact that we're not mashing left and right mouse button anymore. It's gonna take me a little bit while to get fully used to it, but... I just realized I did this whole run without the loose showing on. Which doesn't really matter, I'm just trying to demonstrate system and how good it is. Again, it's not really the point. The point is to just kind of like just show how it plays or try to demonstrate it. Overall though, I think this patch is very promising. A lot of really key kind of modern day ARPG gameplay mechanics have been introduced. A lot of bug fixes and they did also hint previously that there is going to be more. So I'm banging on potentially new content. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, and I think that will be really good for the longevity of the game. Again, let me know in the comment section below if you guys agree or disagree, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I tried to highlight a lot of the key segments. Uh, as always, if you could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content on YouTube, and I do stream twice a week on Twitch, so any follows on Twitch or subs on YouTube would be amazing. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan-frickin-tastic day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.